Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask Twill. I asked you guys for questions last time and you gave me some great ones, but two were asked more often than any other. Number one was why do you use Fedora, and number two was can you show exactly how you made the intro for This Week in Linux. Alright, so for question one, it's really a personal thing. Why I use Fedora is different from why anybody else would use Fedora. When I moved to Ubuntu 9.10 on my laptop, the battery was acting funny, it wouldn't hold a charge, it would say your battery is 100% charged when it would actually be like 20% charged. I looked it up and it was actually a documented bug, but it seemed to be a problem that just started with 9.10. It had something to do with device kit power being changed from HAL. I haven't had a chance to try out 10.04 on my laptop yet to see if that is fixed. The bug is sort of there in Fedora 12, but it's definitely not as bad. If I leave it unplugged for a very short amount of time, three or four minutes, I can plug it back in and it will work just fine. Other than that, the main reason I moved to Fedora was capturing USB audio. When I first started making videos, I wanted to use a USB microphone and sync it up to the video from my camera. Ubuntu wouldn't do it exactly right. For some reason, the video would always come out to be a little bit shorter than the audio. There was some sort of a lag, a delay, don't know exactly what. Well, when I tried it on Fedora on my laptop, it worked beautifully. It was perfect, it was seamless every single time. That said, I am now actually using Ubuntu 10.04 on my desktop. It's capturing just as well. There's definitely still a little bit of a delay, but it's not nearly as bad as it was, and it's really not noticeable. Other than that, there are some neat things about Fedora that Ubuntu doesn't have. The RPM system is a completely different way of doing things than the dpackage system, the, De the Debian package management system. One of the greatest things about RPM is the fact they've implemented history. The history feature is great in that if you do an update and something is broken in that update, you can just say pseudo history, undo whatever number it was, and it'll roll it back. No changes needed. It just does it. So yeah, really, that's all there was to it. There were a couple little bugs with Ubuntu 9.10 that weren't going to be worked out anytime soon, and I needed something that was good and stable and fast, and Fedora was there for me. All right, in question number two, people were asking how I made the intro for this week in Linux. Well, like I said in the last video, I used stock HD footage I found from Pond5.com. It was free at the time, it is no longer free. They do offer one clip per week for free, it depends on what week it is as to what the clip's going to be, but I just happened to luck out and found one I really liked on a week that it was free, it was beautiful, it was perfect. And with that said, let me go ahead and go to the screencast and I'll show you a little bit of how I made it. Alright, so here we go. As you'll notice, we've got three files here that we're going to use. The first one is the Creative Commons license Tux image. It's got a transparent background. It's very large, which makes it very easy to use. I actually resized it all down to 1280 by 720 so it would fit within that 720 pixel frame. Not a big deal. I created this logo, my Twill logo transparent. It's got the text on top of a transparent background. Again, very easy to create using GIMP. Use a ping. It's a transparent alpha layers. It's great and this HD background video that I got from Pond5.com. As you'll see here, it's very slow, but it, and it goes from right to left. But it's got this great little space built in here that I put the tux in, and my logo goes on this part. So, What I'm going to do is drag all three of these into Caden Live. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about Caden Live, other than I will at some point do a video on an, a tutorial on Caden Live. But drag them all in there and we'll get started. So you grab the HD clip here at the top, drag it into the third video layer. You see you've got three video, two audio by default. I've actually got mine laid out a little differently than the default, but moving on. So I'll put the video clip down here. As you noticed before, it is reversed from the way that I did it. So what you do is you go into the miscellaneous category. The categories kill me here, but the one I chose was rotate and shear. There's probably a different way to do it, but I like doing it this way. I choose the rotate X option once I put it over that. And if you notice when I did that, it just took it from the default and rotated it 180 degrees. Not a big deal, very easy to do. So now, if I watch it a little bit, it goes from left to right. So from there, I take the tux and I drag it down to the layer on top of it. Uh, by default, you see it's going to just come up and be on top of whatever you've got there. It's going to appear. Not what we want. So we're going to click the little bottom left corner here. You see it glows there when I did that, and that creates a transition on top of it. You'll drag it to whatever the size is. The dissolve one is the default. We're going to choose composite, because that will put it on top. You see now it, it actually took out that uh, transparent background and put it over top of the existing video. Now it's still not quite right, so I'm going to click this composite again. I'm going to click the, the little button here, the little uh, cog, and go down to resize to 50%. That makes it a little bit smaller, a little easier to work with, and you can actually move it by hand here to wherever you want it. Still, now we're in the right position, but we want it to disappear a little earlier, so we'll drag that. Yeah. So now, by the time uh, the, the little swirly gets past him, you'll see he'll actually disappear. 
and he's gone. Okay, now one thing I had to do here though, let me just click and zoom in. I added a fade in and a fade out. So we'll go to fade, fade from black, make it a very short one because this is a very short clip. And we'll add a fade to black to get it to go away. Same thing, just very easily done. And now, watch it again. Should fade in from black, there you go. And it fades back out to black. And right about the time it gets to probably here is where we'd want the text, the logo to show up. So we'll do the same thing we did with the tux, and we want the this to stay right to the end. But we need to composite it again, so we'll create that transition, change it from dissolve to composite. And you'll notice that it's composited over the wrong layer, so we'll actually tell it to composite over layer 2. And there it is. Now we still need to be smaller, so we'll resize it to 50%, and then drag it wherever you want it to go. See, this was a, a little bit of a hard part, but there you go. Not too difficult. And you want it to fade from black, same way. Yeah, I, honestly guys, I'm not really a very good video editor, so I'm making a lot of this up as I go along. Fade to black when it's done. No, wait, we don't want that fade to black. So we'll go ahead and just delete that one out. There you go. So at this point, you've got, there you go, tux faded in, the text fades in, tux faded out, and boom. And that's it. That is my intro. One thing I did forget to do here, there is a sound effect I put over it. It's just another free sound effect that I found at Pond5.com. And I just superimposed it. I dragged it, drag and drop it right here into the audio layer. Not a big deal to do. If I come back over to my uh, music, I can drag in this 8-bit uh, music from my friend Corey. And just plop it in there. Not a big deal. Try again. Plop. Just to make life a little easier. We'll make it small. So now instead of just being a plain video, And you see it's running a little bit a little bit choppy on my machine. I'm actually running a quad-core machine with 8 gigs of RAM, and it still runs a little bit odd because I've got four layers running. If you composite, you're going to have a little bit of a lag, but if I render this, it's going to come out beautiful. And that's really all I did. It was the Caden Live compositing feature. I just slapped everything together, flipped it all around, and hit go. But before I go, there's a couple of cool things I wanted to show you. I got two new logos in my email. The first one is from Fame Deceives on YouTube, and here it is. And the second one is from LMA982. They're both some very nice looking logos. Thank you for sending them in, guys. And of course, I received a picture from Timmy54321 from my IRC chat room, Twill on Freenode. Timmy is the first person ever, other than myself, that has bought a This Week in Linux t-shirt. As always, those t-shirts are available at twill.spreadshirt.com and twill.spreadshirt.co.uk if you're in Europe. But that's all for this episode of Ask Twill. If you have any questions for me, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Ask them on Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want to ask them. I will do my best to answer every one that I get, and if there's one that's asked enough times, I'll put it in next week's Ask Twill video. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on Friday for This Week in Linux news.